answer it. And now yeah. we will move to our final speakers, Maria Osetrova. And Maria is from Russia. She is, I'm going to come. Uh, she's, she, she's a graduate student in the Center for Neurobiology and Brain Restorations at Skoltech in Moscow, Russia. Um, she is doing her thesis work in the laboratory of Professor Filip Katovich. Her their lab is focused on metabolic and structural organizations of human brain from the ev evolutionary point of view, as well as in the context of mental illnesses. And the project today Maria will talk about is devoted to analysis of the lipid compositions of the healthy hum adult human brain. And her talk is titled Comprehensive Map of Human Brain Lipidome. And stage is your Maria. Thank you for this kind introduction. I think uh, all the main points you have already said. Yes, uh, I'm from Russia. I work in uh, laboratory of Professor Filip Haytovich in Center for Neurobiology and Administration at Skolkov Institute of Science and Technology. And indeed, our lab focuses on uh, analysis of molecular and biochemical features of the human brain in scope of evolution, as well as mental illnesses. And today's talk is devoted to a more basic uh, project, basic science project, uh, the lipidomic map of healthy adult human brain, which will be like the starting point for further analysis. And first of all, why are we interested in lipids in the human brain? Uh, there are some reasons for that. Uh, first of all, uh, a huge variety of lipid species exists and a significant part And a significant part of human genome is devoted to lipid metabolism. And brain itself has the second highest concentration of lipids in the human body. And due to a variety of biochemical structure, um, lipids can uh, connect, uh, connect differently in brain. They serve as energy substrates, they maintain cellular structure, machinery, and they also use the signaling molecules, which is especially interest interesting for the brain. And also, lipids are understudied yet, so we have a chance to be the first ones to find something new and awesome. So, uh, here is our experiment design. We uh, dissected 75 anatomically distinct brain regions from brains of four healthy adult individuals. Uh, we extracted lipids and did liquid chromato chromatography coupled with mass spectrometry because it's the main method used for analysis of lipids. And uh, in parallel, we did gene expression analysis for a subset of 35 brain regions from the same donors in the same regions. And we uh, were able to annotate uh, about 400 different lipid species uh, from 20 lipid classes. And uh, the result number zero is that uh, we have lipids that behave differently in the brain. And when we cluster uh, brain region based on the lipid composition and based on the gene expression data, we have similar but yet quite different uh, picture. And if for mRNA data, we see that the main, um, the main factor is the spatial proximity of brain regions. So we have the neocortex lasted here, cerebral gray matter here, and some subcortical areas here. For lipids, uh, the picture is a bit different. There is still a signal from white matter but also some uh, cortical regions are closer to the subcortical ones. And uh, here we investigated directly this correlation to special instances. And indeed it was very similar for mRNA, but a little bit different for lipids. It means that there are some regions that uh, can be closely located by may be very different in the lipid composition. And we looked for another factor which can explain the lipid differences. And spoiler alert, uh, this factor turned out to be the myelin content of the brain. Uh, because when we plot the overall lipid content uh, of the brain from our data, we see that it is very similar to the myelin map uh, measured using, using structural MRI data. So we used myelin as a factor to classify lipids based on their behavior. And indeed, we see that the myelin correlated lipids uh, are the most abundant group, but also there are lipids that have uh, that are highly anti-correlated with myelin. Also some 
uh, lipids with like flat profile across all regions, which we call housekeeping lipids. And also a small cluster of uh, lipids we can't explain by myelin signal, but which have a specific regional profile. So we wanted to see whether we can dive deeper into these differences and we wanted to analyze uh, relation to specific lipid species to uh, cell types. So we use the expression data to select uh, gene expression markers for six cell types and we assigned each lipid species to a specific cell type based on correlation scores. And we saw that indeed uh, some, lipid, some cell types were specific uh, to, uh, to one um, lipid cluster. For example, oligodendrocytes were specific to this myelin plus group, which is expected uh, because myelin is formed by oligodendrocytes. And on the other hand, we see that uh, there are lipid classes that are specific to a particular cell type, which is interesting. For example, the same oligodendrocytes uh, are cluster of lipids assigned to oligodendrocytes are enriched in sulfic acid ceramides as well as diacyl glycerides. And you know, we validated this result using a cell sorting experiment for uh, mice brain uh, with fluorescent neurons. And we saw significant difference for neuronal versus non-neuronal markers in the sorted versus unsorted fraction. And finally, we wanted to see whether uh, lipids can be related to brain functioning and we took the functional connectivity data from open source and uh, there we had a little problem because the functional connectivity is a matrix and we have vectors so we wanted to compare them in two ways we transferred a matrix to a vector so we want the first principal component uh, from the functional connectivity matrix and correlated it to each uh, lipid uh, profile separately and we saw that this uh, unexplained cluster of lipids was significantly higher correlated with functional connectivity of the brain which is interesting and we saw that there are specific lipids in this group uh, for example polyunsaturated fatty acids which are known to be important for brain functioning and uh, on the other hand we transferred our vectors to matrix uh, creating like a biochemical connectivity of brain regions taking either lipids or expression separately or combining the two. We did uh, 1000 iterations uh, for randomization. And we saw that uh, interestingly, MRI and lipid data is, uh, is correlated to functional connectivity better than each um, data set separately. So, Mm -hmm. These are the conclusions from our work. So I, I think I won't read them because I said all of them already. And I want to thank all my uh, colleagues, especially my scientific supervisor, Professor Filip Haidovic. And here are some contacts if you want to uh, collaborate or you want to suggest something to our work. And of course, let's discuss. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them. Yeah. Thank you. This is interesting, Maria. It's just like you are looking at different aspects of the brain. Could you please evaporate a little bit? If I mean, what, with understanding lipid, what kind of things we can do? It's just like these lipid instructions or the map in the brain. How? What kind of information they provide for us to understand how brain? I mean, can we use it in a way that brains work? You know, how brain functions? Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, uh, as I said in the beginning, this this particular project is a bit like you know basic science. So we, for example, we have the expression map of the brain, we have like protein atlas, and we don't know that much about lipids yet. Uh, but there is again a huge variety of lipids, and we want to first like see how it should be in normal condition, and then we can do comparative analysis. For example, our lab, uh, we are planning to do the schizophrenia uh, lipidomic brain map, uh, which is now work in progress. We also plan, we are now collecting samples from major depressive disorders. So when we know how this lipid, um, uh, lipid landscape uh, 
of the brain is in normal condition, we can see what changed and then like taking out the slippers that are significantly different in pathological conditions, we can see uh, why, what is broken, for example, which metabolic pathways are damaged in a specific condition. And also, that, of course, in, uh, in terms of evolution. Is it dynamic? I mean, yeah. as I said, I, I don't know. How, I don't know the literature that much, but it's just like for the lipid structure, as you mentioned, it is very early stage of understanding this as, as far as I see from your talk, but it, the lipid structure, for example, is there any changes when we are doing something? Do you see what I mean? It's just like when I'm sleeping or when I'm awake, is there a change on it? It's not, right? Um, no, no, not in this scale, but... Um... Of course, lipid composition of the body itself and the brain also is influenced by the uh, by the diet. For example, mm -hmm. in our in our lab, we have a very interesting project uh, devoted to parallel analysis of brain uh, brain lipid composition and breast milk lipid composition for a variety of species, and we see this correlation between the lipid composition of milk and we see how lipids are very rapidly changing during the very early stage of development and how these lipids from the milk come to the brain and how human for example breast milk is very different from other species so of course we think that that's what makes us humans so so smart mm -hmm. So you are saying that the at developmental stage, it is a very important point and it might give us some understanding how the brain is just like reshaped or developed if we understand the lipid structure yes. well. That, yes, that... Uh, exactly. Sorry? No, 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 I'm listening to you, sorry. sorry. Yeah, it is an interesting topic. If you have any questions from our panelists to Maria, please unmute yourself and ask your questions. And this is the same if you have any questions for Maria. She's already putting her emails and Twitter on the screen as you see now, feel free to contact her. And she also mentioned in her email that they're open to collaborations and to understand lipid structures in different aspects. Uh, can I ask one thing? Yes, please go yeah, for sure. it. Uh, uh, you said uh, you computed uh, the myelin maps uh, by taking the ratio of uh, T1 weighted to T2 weighted, right? Yes. Uh, so how do you uh, do the, how do you do the registration? Did you do uh, T2 to T1 or T1 to T2? Um, I didn't do it myself. I took uh, the data from like from previous research. Um, I see. And I just, yes, I did. I, I, as far as I know, this T1 to T2 ratio is not perfect uh, for evaluation of myelin content. Uh, like it was yes. as zero or first uh, approximation for us. Uh, mm -hmm. And we see interesting results now. So probably we'll do like direct experiments uh, to measure myelin in a with methods that are designed specifically to measure myelin. And, okay, okay. Um, so you yeah. just took the already created myelin maps? Yes, yes. It was an oh. averaged map from the Human Connectome Project. And uh, of course, it was uh, those were not exactly the same brains because we get the brains like detected into um, pieces, not the whole brain. Uh, I think uh, in further project, especially when it comes to uh, some pathological conditions, it would be interesting to directly measure the uh, myelin maps of the exact brain we are measuring and do this parallel analysis. I think that should show some interesting results because for example, for schizophrenia, we see that the major changes are in the cluster of lipids that are associated with myelin. So, for example, for schizophrenia, we should see some signal on the structural MRI as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, it can be used for different.